This video covers half angle identities and it is the last section in chapter five that we're gonna cover. So here are our half angle identities. If you really wanna see where they come from, turn to page 232 and you can read where they come from. They basically come from our double angle identities. I mean, our, yeah, our double angle identities. So you can go over those proofs if you want to. I don't, they don't do all of them. They only do, I think they walk through one of them for you, but um, I'm sure you could figure the rest of them out afterwards. But I want you to notice what's different here is that cosine of half of A only has one formula and so does sine, whereas tangent of half of A has three formulas that you can use. Okay, so always pick the easiest formula when you're working with tangent. Um, all right, so also the other thing that I want you to notice is that the cosine of half of A, the sine of half of A, and one of the formulas for the tangent of half of A has a plus or minus in front of it. So a really key point here is when you're working with those, right? The other two for tangent, um, this guy right here and this guy right here, you won't need this, but anything that has a plus or minus in front of it, you need to know A over two um, is in what quadrant? you have to find the quadrant out that A over two lies in, okay? If you don't know the quadrant, you won't know whether to pick the positive version or the negative version. So let's go ahead and do some examples here. So keep your, um, keep your formulas handy. I don't have these memorized at all, so um, I always have them in front of me when I do these. So, I'm gonna assume that this is a half angle since we're in the half angle section. So this is really equivalent to the tangent of A over two. So if 15 is equivalent to A over two, what is A? A is gonna be 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and erase this. I'm gonna put a 30 degrees up here. So A is gonna be 30 degrees. So when you start off with, just make sure that this tangent of 15 degrees is equivalent to this expression right here. 30 over two is 15. So now I have a choice of picking any of the formulas I have for, for tangent over two. So I typically choose one of the formulas that, I, um, that don't make me pick the positive or negative. So I'm gonna choose the second one. So I'm gonna say the sine of A, A is 30 degrees, over one plus the cosine of A, A is 30 degrees. So the sine of A is one half, and the cosine of A is, and maybe I should have done the other one because now I'm gonna get radical 3 over 2. So now I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2 because I can't have a complex fraction. Okay, so I'm going to get 1 over 1 or 2. 2 plus the square root of 3. And I cannot have radicals in the denominator. So Mrs. Peterson chose a really bad one to use. Maybe I should have used the other one. Okay, so I'm going to get 2 minus radical 3 over 2 minus 3. So this is going to be a negative 1. So I'm just going to apply that to what I have in the numerator. I have negative 2 plus radical 3. So that's the answer I have. Probably would have been easier just to use the last version instead of what I used. So now I'm going to go ahead and do um, cosine of 67.5 degrees. And I'm gonna set that equal to the cosine of A over two. So let's solve for A. So for A, I'm gonna get 135 degrees. 
So I'm going to erase that A here and put my 135 degrees right in here. All right, so now I need to know um, what quadrant we're in because cosine only has one formula for me to use. It's plus or minus. So I know 65 degrees is in quadrant one, so I'm going to pick positive. So I have 1 plus the cosine of 135 degrees over 2. All right, so what's the cosine of 135 degrees? Well, that is a 45 degree angle as a reference angle. Cosine's negative in quadrant 2. Remember, 135 is in quadrant 2. Do not get mistaken between the quadrant that A over 2 is in and the quadrant that A is in. So this is going to be minus the square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. Okay, so I want you to remember we cannot have a complex fraction. So under the radical, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2. So I end up with 2 minus <clears throat> radical 2 over 4. And yes, we can have radicals within radicals. And this will be my final answer. So let's do the sine of 150, 195. So I'm going to set that equal to the sine of a over 2. So let's solve for a. Okay, so when I solve for a, I get 300 and what's that going to be? 300 and 90 degrees equals A. All right, so 390 degrees, when I erase that, what's an equivalent and coterminal angle um, for 390 degrees? Well, a coterminal angle is 30 degrees. So the sine of 390 degrees over 2 is going to be the sine of 30 degrees over 2. <clears throat> but let's just use this, the 390 right now, and you will see what I mean. Okay, so when we plug this in our formula, we know that 195 degrees, that is a Q3 angle. So I'm going to pick the negative version. So I will say 1 minus the cosine of 390 degrees over 2. I know that 390 degrees is coterminal with 30 degrees. So these will have the same value. And I know that the cosine of 30 degrees is radical 3 over 2. And again, under the radical, I can't have this complex fraction, so I'm going to multiply it by 2 over 2 to get the square root of 2 minus radical 3 over 4. Final answer. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the sine of 165. Oh, I had to check and make sure we didn't do that already. The sine of 165, let's set that equal to a over 2. So if I solve for a, I get a is going to be 330 degrees. Good, so now let me erase that a and replace it with 330 degrees. All right, so where is 165 degrees? That is in Q2. So I'm going to pick the positive version here. So I get 1 minus the cosine of 330 degrees over 2. The cosine of 330 degrees, that's in quadrant um, 4. Cosine is positive in quadrant 4, and its reference angle is 30. So I know that this is going to be radical 3 over 2. And again, I'm going to um, 
get rid of this ugly complex fraction by multiplying by 2 over 2 underneath my radical to end up with 2 minus radical 3 over 4 as my final answer, which makes sense because 165 degrees is in Q2. It should be positive. All right, so before we continue, how do I know whether I have a half angle? I should use a half angle identity or I should use a double angle identity. Well, the way I take a look at it is I solve for A in both cases. I know what A is going to be here, sine of 330 degrees over 2, right? I know all my trigonometric values of 330 degrees over 2. But if I solve for A here, I'm going to be dividing 165 in half. So that gives me the sine of 2 times, let's see, 80 2.5 degrees. I don't know my trigonometric values for 82.5 degrees. So if I had to pick one to solve to give it an exact value and I don't have a calculator, I definitely wouldn't use my double angle identity here. I would use my half angle identity. Okay, and that's how I determine which one I'm going to use. All right. So I'm going to pause this right now. Um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to finish these types of examples in my next video.